Today's story was written by Reddit user the Wirum 99 If you like this story and would like to support the author, I have linked their Patreon in the description. It was early morning over Decal Prime. From the ink-dark sky rose a bright light disk, rotating around the system's black hole. It rose above the horizon and spilled its warm beams through an open window of a hallway Val was scurrying through. Textbooks under one arm, markers in the other one, and holding his mug of bean brew in his third auxiliary arm. Currently he was having a mild panic attack, as he realised he won't get to the classroom in time. Pardon me, shouted his excuse vow, after he collided with the school's janitor, spilling his bucket on the ground. Janitor didn't answer, just a sad sigh followed by the sound of a depressed mop. 204 Room 204, room 204, repeated to himself Val. Finally, plastic doors with number 204 painted on them appeared in front of his three eyes. He might just about make it. With a sharp breath, he stepped into the classroom and was immediately greeted by two dozen heads bowing down in amusement as he entered late. He politely replied with the same greeting gesture, trying to hide his shame. Morning class, sit down, he said shortly after. Students did as told, giving him a moment to observe them and vice versa. Val would lie to himself if he had said he was not nervous. In fact, he was an anxious bundle of nerves, but he had also a lot of passion for his field of work. Okay, just do as you prepared for yesterday, he thought, and stood up in a prepared motion. Hello class, I am Val, and I am going to be your teacher for the brand new curriculum of astronomy, he started. As many of you know, or heard in the news, recent discoveries mandated that we change our curriculum to accommodate it. Now, I know for you, it means one less hour of musical classes, but I can assure you, it is going to be worth it. Val watched as the wave of murmur spread throughout the desks. Some seemed excited, most of them were mildly curious, while only a couple looked like they were bothered by it. Val waited for the buzzing to die down before continuing. Now, you sure do have a lot of questions. Like, what are we going to be learning? How am I going to be grading you? Or perhaps something else is on your mind? Please don't hesitate to ask. Immediately, a couple of arms rose up in his field of view. Is it true our universe is dying? Are we truly the last civilization in the universe? Can I go to the bathroom? Val replied in a blink. That's maybe, probably, and yes. He glanced his eyes around the students, all waiting for answers. You see, it's complicated. I think it would be for the best if we took it from the beginning. Now, who can tell me a detailed summary of our planet? Mainly how it formed and how old it is. A girl at the front desk stood up to answer. The Ava was formed five billion years ago around our central black hole. It was formed from interstellar debris that was caught up by its gravity well. It is orbiting the accretion disk just in the right distance for liquid water to exist on its surface. Perfect for life to evolve on it. Val smiled and nodded. That's correct. What's your name? Tao, she replied. Thank you, Tao. You get yourself an A. He observed as she seated herself back, pretty smug about herself. Val then continued his class. Anyway. You probably already know what a miracle our planet is, even though we observe some other black holes and quasars. We never found any evidence of another planet. All we ever saw was darkness and empty void, nothing else. Of course, we had theories on how the universe came to existence, be it religious or scientific. Only thing both agreed on is that our universe is old, Really, really old. How old? asked another student. So old that there are not enough atoms in it to represent all zeros, he replied. 
like billions upon billions of billion zeros, and that does not even come close. They visibly struggled to perceive it, so he had given them an example. In terms of black holes' lifespans, many of even the supermassive ones dwindled, and our own one will perish in a couple dozen billion years. The universe existed roughly hundreds of times the lifespan of those. Then another student raised his voice, this one sounding annoyed and bothered, like Val just stole his lunch. So what does it have to do with us? Val gave him a side eye, this one seemed like trouble. Well, it just means we really can't grasp or imagine what the universe was before all of it. What the early universe looked like, what gave birth to our planets and black holes, for our entire existence, we couldn't even fathom what really used to be. There were hints and glimpses, but it was like trying to put together shattered glass. Val then dramatically took a breath, and then, a year ago, the answers arrived to us. The archive? Please, everyone knows it's a hoax created by the government. Now that struck a nerve with Val, his head snapped towards a student. That's a lie, young man. The archive is real. Alien probe that seeked out our planet and landed in the ocean for us to retrieve it. Cow seemed offended. That's bullshit. Aliens don't exist. God is real. And Big Pharma is using vaccines to control our brains. Now even his classmates rolled their eyes at him. Val was mostly frozen in disbelief. Um... That's an interesting opinion. Who taught you that? Dad, replied Cal. Unlike you, he's using the real sources. Cal, for the love of pap, shut up, said Tao. Cal wanted to start to argue, but Val stopped it. Silence, both of you. Don't force me to write you a detention. It was more aimed towards Cal, but Val couldn't side with anyone and needed to remain neutral. It did the trick, however, and Cal grumpily slumped over his chair, no longer paying any attention to Val. Where were we? No right. The archive, he said. It's impossible to share with you all the knowledge it contained, but I can muster a quick summary. Ancient race, probably one of the first to ever exist, who called themselves humans, created that probe. Everything they ever knew and learned, they stored into it culture, physics, mathematics, astronomy, and thanks to them, we knew what the universe used to be like, what a star looks like, how galaxies spun, what a night sky they could see. Now he had the attention of everyone in the class, except Cow, who has his eyes resentfully locked on his handheld computer device. It's probably better that I show you. Val smiled like a child and activated the projector in the classroom. An image appeared. It seemed like a work fiction. It depicted a night sky in high detail, covered in millions of bright dots. Some were brighter than others. Some had different hues. Some were grouped closely, others not. But yet, they were there, cluttering the view. The dots you see are stars. Real stars. They don't exist anymore. Only our mathematical model suggested they could be possible. Now we have evidence as to our theories being correct. Is that what they used to see? Someone breathed out in astonishment. Indeed, they used to travel between them. Val then put up the next picture. It was that of a space vessel, probably from the early era of their space exploration. Considering its primitive design, it looked like something between a plane and a rocket, in black and white coating. They went from this to this, he said, as he put another image. The next one was basically unrecognisable as a spacefaring vessel. It was just a large cylindrical object. It had no visible propulsion, except some odd rings evenly distributed along its length. Around it, hundreds of other craft could be seen all too alien for them to even discern their purpose or propulsion. Can you tell us about the stars? 
another student asked. Of course, said Val, and projected a picture of one. Stars were, in essence, balls of plasma, consisting of hydrogen and helium. Their immense size and gravity forced fusion of these elements, creating heat and pressure. More pictures of them flashed on the screen. They were very varied, from their colours to their size. There were billions of them, and grouped together they formed something called a galaxy. Another picture, this time of a spiralling entity made out of stars. It was fascinating to watch. The individual arms, the tints of the disc, to the centre of it, shining like a beacon in the dark void. And yet it was not alone, for there were many others like it in the picture. But what happened? Why are they not here anymore? Did you know how I said the universe is old? Well, stars need fuel to run, just like a car. Once they run out, they die. And just like with our fossil fuels, there is a finite supply of it. It took billions and billions of years, but over time, every bit of hydrogen got depleted or sucked by a black hole. Stars stopped their life cycle, old stars died, and there were no new ones to replace them. We are not sure when the last star died, but it was long, long before our planet even existed. And humans? asked Tao. Val sighed. They perished too. Their civilization lasted for millions of years, but even they couldn't escape the march of time. They seeded life across their galaxy, built immense megastructures around stars and black holes, even an artificial ring world spanning across the entire star system. At last, they could see their time was coming to an end. They built these probes. They built them in the hope that even long after they will be gone, they could still help those in need and be remembered. After them, there existed countless billions of other alien civilizations, each around their star, guarding them. Built on the shoulders of humanity, they too lived and died, and as the stars started to vanish, so did the aliens and life itself. And now, life simply does not exist in our universe anywhere. We might very well be the last civilization to ever exist. A realisation hit them. He knew that feeling. Everyone hoped they were not alone, that there is someone out there to reach to, to connect to. But they were too late. They arrived at the empty house, and it was up to them to close the door and turn off the lights. I realise this is a bit of a heavy topic, so do you want me to close on something hopeful? Everyone turned their eyes back to Val. We have not decrypted everything from the probe yet. The photos you saw are approximately 0.0002% of all data contained. There seems to be some kind of lock in it, tied to the sensors of the probe. Possibly a safeguard. As I can imagine, we could destroy ourselves with advanced knowledge like that. However, what was not encoded was a message at the end. If you don't mind, I want to read it. Val brought his handheld device and read from it. To whoever finds this message, to whoever recovers our Messiah, you might live in a dark place with no future ahead of you, full of inky void and cold vacuum filled with dread and rot. But fear not, for we are with you. We always will be. We left you great gifts to guide you through this time, and a promise of hope is encrypted aboard. We believe in you. We believe you will see the gleaming stars, spinning galaxies, and bright nebula. That you will see planets full of life, green grass, and blue oceans, illuminated by a warm yellow sun. We promise you, we will meet you on the other side, and we will guide you through the wonders of all universes. We can't wait for the day to meet you. Humanity. Humanity.